Not me having fluff in my hair in every clip in this video. Yo, so this is a part two of the collab video with Brian. We are making rugs for each other. In the first part, I made a skull rug, which kind of was modular and it breaks apart. Basically, it was to give Brian as much freedom as he needs to get his creative juices flowing, you know, and make it so that when he makes his half of the rug, there's not so much of my DNA in it that he can't be creative in his own way. And when I say the results that he came up with, fantastic, like this, this to me is what a collab is. It's supposed to be achieving something creatively that you couldn't achieve by yourself. I'm just so grateful to have creative people like this in my life. But anyway, I need to figure out what I'm gonna do with Brian's half of the design that he sent over to me. So I'm gonna get to drawing and hopefully we can come up with something that meets even halfway of what he was able to achieve with his design. How do you handle that psychologically? Cause we spoke about this before, but Dude. I feel like it's always it's always a new challenge when everything's like mess up. So I don't know. So I was I'm actually reading a cute little book, right? About um well anyways, it doesn't matter what it's about, but the section that I was I'm thinking about, it talks about how uh when like bad things happen, uh, sometimes we have a tendency to like retreat into like a younger self or like even um just like think we screwed up. So eventually like even these small little little things seem like the end of the world. But what it says and kind of what I, I think what I live by is if you stay curious, so instead of being like, oh, this, this sucks. You stay curious, you can just be like, all right, how am I gonna fix this? It's old Thomas Edison, like, oh, I found a hundred ways to not do a, a light bulb. Yeah. But just do you think that, that, that's interesting. Do you think that like, do you think that you're often, cause you said that about like when you was young, do you think that you're fundamentally like the same person you was when you were young, but now just like, I guess with more experience or do you think that you're like a completely different person? Um, you know, I think I am basically the same person like granted we all grow up and like experience will like morph and kind of um, shape you to like who you are right yeah but also feel like i'm just like constantly trying to like revert back to like the the wholesomeness or like the completeness of my younger self i was very privy to uh have like a, a lush lush no lush isn't the word I had, a, I had a very like innocent and wholesome childhood so yeah we're just trying to find our way back there baby <laughs> as opposed to the debauchery that we're getting up to now you know what i mean yeah i mean like life has has a way of like shitting on you right yeah you can either be like all right this sucks or you can be like all right what can i do to make this better um do I, am i gonna become a cynic or am i gonna like figure out my own shit and, and get things going you know yeah now nah, i get it you know it's funny because that's i think that's the difference between like I guess people that can kind of access that part where they actually do well because it's like some people they see other people doing that good shit or like they see they feel bad in themselves and they go okay cool I want to drag everyone else down to where I am right. rather yeah. than saying okay I want to elevate up to where you know maybe I see other people or just to where I see my best is you know what I mean hell yeah Hey, so in part one of this video series, I made a rug for Schmood and then he made one for me. We did it in half so that basically we could finish each other's and this is what he sent me. If you haven't already seen his part of the video, you should check it out. Basically, he did like so many different processes with this. Like he started off by tufting it and then he put like lots of little details in. So these are all like hand stitched, including like the little bubbles here. And then he like shaved it at one point and he did like a whole bunch of stuff. I think he even tried to tuft through the glue like it was mad. I am not gonna be working anywhere near that hard because <laughs> I like it easy life we actually opened it up for the first time on live as well together but it kind of gave us an idea when we were doing that we kind of want to do like a craft wars i guess where like we both go on live and then we have like a project to do so maybe it's pottery or it's embroidery we've got a set amount of time and then you guys pick the winner and like you watch us do the whole process on live and like when it's done it's done and we're thinking of maybe getting some of you guys involved like so it's not always us doing the battle sometimes maybe you guys can jump in on a battle or you can suggest some creators that you really like and we can try and get them in could be a good idea if you guys are into it let me know in the comments if you have an idea Ideas of how to structure it. Let's have some group energy flowing, you know, let's get each other's minds together so we can actually figure out how this is gonna work out because I have no clue. Uh, so uh, one of my brother's friends, she's my friend now, a uh, girl with the fox tattoos, her handle on Instagram. Um, she's actually done all my tattoos and I just have like itty bitty small ones, but I was like, I want a bigger one. Um, and so I got little raspberries, raspberries. <laughs> And one, I just love raspberries, but in my dad's garden, it's just plum full, plum full. Sure. It's just, there's so many raspberries and like, that's kind of like, when I think of the gar his garden, I think of raspberries. So oh, kind of as an homage to my, my pops. 
Yeah. He hates tattoos though, so it's kind of ironic. <laughs> it's like it's like he can't be mad. I I got this for you, Dad. You can't get mad know, at my right? tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I I hid my first tattoo from my mom for like months. It was hilarious. Why is something that stops you in your creative process? How'd you get back into it? What stops my motivation? I, I, do you have a do you have a good one that stops you? Me just like being motivated in general is hard. It's hard to like start. As soon as I yeah. start, I'm good. But like getting me to start is hard. I, I think for me, again, it's the procrastination thing. So it's like, um, along with anxiety as well. So like sometimes I'll get anxiety around the new project. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But I find that that only happens when, like, I can use the I can use procrastination and anxiety to fight each other. So it's like, I'll do a bunch of projects at the same time. I love that. And then it's like, if I've got a new project that I haven't started, but it's just an idea, and an old project which I'm halfway through, I'll start to get procrastination for the one that I'm halfway through. And I'll use mm -hmm. that to start the new project. Oh, cool. And then if I've got anxiety, um, that will probably stop me from doing the new project. So I use that to do the old project. So basically, I bounce between the two. So it's like when I'm feeling one of those emotions, I go to another piece of work. And then when I'm doing another one, I bounce between. Um, so doing multiple projects sometimes might help. But then also, you need to find your own balance. Because like for me, that's good. But for some people, that might be overwhelming. So it's not necessarily advice. It's just, I guess, what I do. What I do is... Um... I mean, I procrastinate so I can do all the things that I love. And then I love uh, crunch time. I, I think it, like, it reminds me of being back in university, in college. Um, when I had like an art project due, I'd stay up all night. And I'd literally like wake, I wouldn't go to sleep. I'd just like get the project like done just in the nick of time and show up to, to the class. ta -da. Like, like, here it is. <laughs> and I love, like I live for that. And I like, I found like a fun balance. And that's what it is. I think it's just finding your flow, finding your balance of of like what you work well in. If you need someone like on your ass telling you to like work, find someone, become accountable. Find like a friend, be like, hey, I'm making this, uh, ask for updates. Or like someone who, maybe not even that, but like someone who's gonna be stoked about it, you know? So they'll, they'll naturally ask for updates. You guys are all my, my uh, you all hold me accountable. The only reason I'm, I'm like, get, I get anything done is because everyone who's like waiting for a video or like stoked on the project, I'm like, I gotta get it done. I gotta get it done for Ivy occasionally. I've come to a new realization. Cause like when we first started um, the collab and we had like our little chit chats, we talked and like, I even like a joke, I'm like, Denzel's my therapist, dude. <laughs> but you were like, like it was, it was things I needed to talk out. And um, I was just working myself like dry. I was putting out, what's funny is I wasn't even putting that money like videos out. Well, I was, okay. I gotta give myself credit, right? Give myself credit, dude. I, I was putting out like five videos a month, and we were going from putting out like one video a month to five a month, and that grind was just killing me. And I wasn't taking enough time for myself. I wasn't doing all these things, all these like self care stuff. And I'm actually came to a new realization when you talk about streamlining things. Um, the realization is that I think we, as content creators, I don't know, as artists, we can do half amount of work and get double the amount of like worth out of it. And like that's what i've been trying to figure out how to do and like i don't know so far it's working but i all i've been doing is just like giving myself time to like do stuff for myself or like uh i've become really good at procrastinating <laughs> and i love it bro i am the king and queen of procrastination like i thing, i know how to do it but you know what's funny though i procrastinate and then i'll like be productive in my procrastination it's really weird so like i'll be at the gym and then I'll be thinking about art stuff. You know oh, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, that's the way to do it, dude. Yeah, like you procrastinate, but make it work for you. You know what I mean? It's funny. So this last, so I didn't want to, I wasn't in the mood to, to film a video. Like I just wasn't in the mood to like do a project or a craft. Fuck it. How do I make this fun? And what I did is I did like a tiny little skit for both of them. So that's going to be out in like my next like couple of videos. And so, yeah, this, this is like procrastinating like smartly, like doing something that's like fun. That's going to like, uh, motivate you to keep on working on what you need to do and yeah i'm st still just always doing something that i want to do so this is the finished work as you can see all done thank you so much to brian for working with me on this and also make sure you go watch his video and as it turns out this video is actually a giveaway now yay so um all the info is in the description about how you can win if you just leave a comment on both of our videos and go over to brian's website you can get yourself a chance to win anyway that's enough for me enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you later bye